What's going on, everybody? So, this should probably be a Tuesday video, I do believe. I forget how I had all the videos arranged on to here. But this came out about a week ago. If you all remember back in 2018, the uh, National Sports Collectors Convention was in Cleveland. There was a bunch of pictures, and I even think a small video clip or two of an older gentleman that was escorted out. And they seized all of his inventory for fake autographs. Well, <laughs> there's finally been something to come on it three years later. Let's pull it up here. Let me drag that down just a tad. There we go. Can you believe it? Charges dropped against him. Now, I read the whole article on to it. I'll have to scroll through it here in a minute for everybody. But... Most people that were still in it, that was, this was like a huge thing in 2018. I mean, everybody was talking about it. I mean, there was all, t I think there was a few different, um, call them flatbeds worth of memorabilia went out. So here's where it gets interesting. Here it is. Uh, it gives the guy's name. It's an article, so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, autograph dealer who saw his inventory seized on the first day of the National in 18. All charges against him have been dropped. I don't even know how you say Cuyahogo County, Ohio. Prosecutor's office decided last month that they would not pursue criminal charges against him. Except for a board of signed items confiscated by investigators at the show, the cart of, of all of his materials uh, will be returned to him. Very interesting. He was ordered to pay a Louisiana collector $300 in restitution for a multi-signed piece of memorabilia that was purchased at the show, but he gets no penalties. I mean, other than he's probably never allowed back at the show again, uh, because they can just blacklist you for any reason. Let's see if I can find this here. He was indicted uh, in 2019 on numerous charges of forgery, petty theft, Criminal stimulation, 25 counts of trademark counterfeiting. Now, I've talked about the difference between a reprint and counterfeit and enough of the videos already, so we really won't get into it. But 25 accounts that were, and it says there, phony Major League Baseball trademarks. And I'm guessing uh, baseball was just not going to do nothing to them. Um, that's really crazy because this starts showing everybody that's out there making these counterfeits that they're calling reprints that hey go ahead and do it we're not going to get you I, I don't like that at all but where was it at is okay next statement the indictment stated purpose was to defraud evidence in part by his current and prior history of marketing fake sports uh, memorabilia i believe it's say he spent some time in jail or something it it'll go into it here in a second all right where so he pleaded not guilty of the charges, and this is what he had to say right here. All these autographs are authentic, but I don't sell them as authentic. If I recall right, anybody that remembers this, didn't Be didn't they bring over Beckett Steve Grad to look and vout and say these things are fake? I I'm almost positive of it. They brought him over in on it and interrupted Beckett during that. I, I'm almost positive on to because I remember seeing a picture, but I, it might just been, you know, somebody else saying it was Steve Grad. And this is part of the video showing, I mean, this was a whole pallet full of stuff that he was selling there. And they were being offered as decorative items. I guess with wording nowadays, the way you word stuff, you can get pretty much away with anything out there. I mean, I don't know. Oh, here it is. Yeah, he pled guilty of federal charges, New Jersey, for owing 300000 unpaid taxes from the cell of what's described in federal court papers as autographed sports memorabilia in the 90s. 15 months in prison with three years supervised release. So this, this is a big article that came out, but I'm just really in shock over this. I don't know if anybody else knew this. I mean, this was a huge deal, and I remember sitting there talking about this, and that's where we started telling, you know, talking years ago about their between a reprint and, and um, counterfeit. 
and how it hits all these different trademarks, not just like the company, Major League Baseball. It could be anything. If it's a baseball card, you're, you're, you're faking a tops or something like that. There's, you have multiple on that. But I'm just really surprised if they just took it in consideration as age and said, hey, we're just not going to do nothing. I mean, he's not, maybe they thought, you know, life age, expectancy age is blah, blah. I don't know what it is right now, 73, 74. And they're just like, it doesn't pay to do anything. I, I have no idea. But it really just shocked me onto this whole thing. Like, I'm still speechless. I mean, they had three years worth of docket updates, it says there. Three years of this stuff. And regardless of the age, I mean, or how, well, I don't understand just why they would not charge him for more. I know there's a couple people um, that subscribed and watched the videos. I did, I'm not going to say you're lawyers, but I know you have to have some type of law background from what I've been talking to you guys about. Let me know what you guys think, and everybody else, too. Please chime in. But I just don't see how, honestly, he got away with nothing, that the charges are dropped. And, and the w thing was, he had all these autographed pictures up and everything. I mean, who buys decorative, de uh, whatever it was, items for 300 to five thousand dollars in a show i mean it makes no sense i'm sure there's more to it i'm not going to try to go online and pull the whole docket and read it maybe some of you guys already have i have no idea but that's just a lot of stuff I, huh, I, I'm just trying to sit there and read it. You know, again, his use of deceptive promotional efforts coupled the number of duplicates with his confiscated inventory that and readily identifiable hallmarks of forgery and or simulation. Maybe I'm wrong on it. I have no idea. But here it is. as decorative items. I know he said somewhere his, his stuff is real autographs, but he doesn't say... He's, oh, here it is. All these autographs are authentic, but I don't sell them as authentic. I mean, how do you quote yourself saying that? And I, I, I'm i almost positive Steve Grad came down here because a bunch of people caught the autographs not looking right. And I mean, it was like a first day thing because I remember being in Bates' room at live... So he was breaking live streaming... And they, and they were all talking about it. You saw it getting wheeled out, and then people started sending pictures. It was crazy. And, I mean, if he gets off from this, especially with the 25 counts of trademark infringement, it makes you start wondering, are they really going to do anything ever with guys that are selling counterfeits and people are buying them, you know, off of Etsy and all that other stuff? I mean, because this, this had a lot of money, monetary value, I guess you could say, wrapped up into it versus some of the other stuff that's going on out there for, you know, $30. You too could have a Mickey Mantle reprint a, a rookie card, not even age it or whatever they do out there anymore. But I mean, that just says, you know, Hey, fraud. <laughs> All right, everybody. I think I post this, um, see what everybody's comments are on to this. If you knew about it, are you in shock like me? Cause I, I still cannot believe this at all. Just Wow. Um, but yeah, I'll be going through looking at comments. Don't forget live Saturday night uh, for the live sale and auctions. Just me and CBC again. I don't think anybody else has hit me up on it. I'll go back through my emails. I'm catching up on them today. And that's pretty much it for the week. I still have a video of the card show coming out, everybody. But every time I went out and tried to do video... I, I would just have to go back to the table, and so I was cutting footage. So there's not much really great into it. And by the time the show died down, and I'll explain more of it in the video, there was hardly anybody left in there, and I was trying to work a, a big deal on a card of mine. And I, I just didn't get the footage that I wanted in there of it offhand. I also learned a tripod I got needed to be a little bit taller too. So I'll figure that all out for the November show. But I might pop around and head out to a couple shows here, uh, the 25th, and there's another one in October I might go check out. But all right, you guys have a good rest of the week. If you can stop by Saturday, you don't have to buy nothing or nothing. You can just come in here and hang out and stuff. 
But I'll try to catch y'all uh, live either Saturday, if not next Friday. Overtime is back, and we're going to have a lot to talk about on that one. All right. Take care, everybody.